I did a blog the other day that you guys have capitalized on. I mean, there's thousands of people who are into this blog. The journal Lung, the medical journal Lung in 2013 stated this, when evaluating clinical and radiologic findings suspicious for malignancy, cancer, clinicians should be aware that other conditions, including fungal infections, should be included in the differential diagnosis. Folks, as you know, in 1945, I bought this, no, I bought this 1945 book, uh, Manual of Clinical Mycology, and in it, it says doctors need to make differential diagnosis because fungal infections are common. What happened? Why all of a sudden is everything bacteria? Oh, you go to a doctor for anything. You're gone on an antibiotic, and those who don't are gone on an antiviral. Doctors learn that much about bacteriology in medical school, that much about virology, because there's what? Tens of thousands of antibiotics and about 100 antivirals, and that much about mycology. What upsets me is the reason these doctors in lung said this, if you read my blog, was because 27 patients who told they have lung cancer didn't have it. I think misdiagnoses and overdiagnoses happen a lot, not only in the lungs, but also in this tube we call the intestines. I think we ought to start today's show talking a little bit about these polyps and these things that grow outside of the intestine. Are they really cancerous? We'll see you around the corner. You're a smart audience. This is a really good question, Gary. So many of you have this. As a matter of fact, by the time we reach 60 years old, about 40% of Americans suffer from something called diverticulitis. So Gary says, can I reverse my own diverticulitis? Probably confusion, probably frustration. He's probably been back over to his doctor 20 times, and each time the answer is we don't know but take this antibiotic, and by gosh, the antibiotic seems to work for a period of time. So to understand diverticulitis, you already know from watching Know the Cause what itis is. If you're brand new, itis means inflammation, swelling, or infection. So what's a diverticulum if it has itis on the end of it? This represents a diverticulum. This is a pouch that grew out of the intestine on the outside of the intestine. But we shot this shot earlier. Here's inside your intestine. Those are polyps. We call them something different when they grow inside. They're called polyps than when they grow outside, Gary. So understand, you have the outside-itis. Many people have the polyps that grow in the intestine. So what Gary's experiencing is a lot of pain, uh, a lot of abdominal tenderness, fever, nausea, yada, 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 the list is endless. And when this flares up, Gary goes back to the same doc reporting, I want my antibiotics. Why do I have these things? Or let's take it a step further. So many of you have gone in for a colonoscopy and they found six little polyps and said, ah, oh, they're so tiny they don't make a difference. Once they get about the size of a nickel, many of the, those go on to cause cancer, so they'll snare all those out and then follow up. But when you went back, why are there 12 more polyps growing in there? What am I doing with my lifestyle? The answer is we don't know, but we want to see you every year. Heck of a business, huh? Keep coming back, but we don't know. So I want to jump off here and explain a few things. There's three words you need to know the definition of, Gary. Number one is diverticulum, okay? Diverticulum is a sac formation popping outside of the structure of a body. Number two is an ascomycete. Remember or recall from watching Know the Cause for 15 years, an ascomycete is a sac fungus. Can't be differentiated really from a cancer tumor and yet everything's called a cancer tumor. Okay, and they share a lot of similarities. And then a mycetoma is when a pre-existing cavity, arguably there is a cavity, becomes colonized by fungus and forms a fungus ball. That could be a fungus ball, so could those. Those could be fungus balls. So here's the problem. Chronic sinusitis, let's talk about polyps. Chronic sinusitis never goes on to become sinus cancer that I know of, I couldn't find references to it but a lot of colon polyps 
a lot of these intestinal polyps doctors snare out and say, oh, that was so dangerous. It's going to be colon cancer. If you don't change, Gary, I think they're right. If you do change, maybe I can help ans answer your question. Can I help myself with these diverticulitis problems that I'm having? So why don't nasal polyps go on to cause cancer, and yet the same thing growing in the colon do go on to cause cancer? Well, imagine what's in the colon as opposed to what's growing in the nose. I used to scrub, surgically scrub for these, and we'd snare out nasal polyps, and they look like jelly beans. Do you ever suck the color and the candy, the sweet of a jelly bean, you know, for Easter when you were a child? That's what nasal polyps look like. And obviously, there's a lot more in the intestine, and these things do become cancerous. I'm totally convinced doctors are right, but their answer is we don't know why. My answer is, if they're fungus, folks, Mayo Clinic said 96% of all chronic sinusitis is due to fungus. And when you've got chronic sinusitis, you grow nasal polyps. All doctors know that. What about the intestine? What about the diverticulum? What if they're one and the same? It's so fascinating to me that the answer is because they learned that much in college about bacteriology, because there's thousands of antibiotics. And they learn that much about virology, because there's a hundred antivirals. And they learn that much about mycology, because there's only a handful of antifungals out there, meaning to a medical student, oh, fungus is irrelevant, but bacteria is a horrible problem. What if, Gary, we were fueling your diverticulum by putting you on antibiotics over and over and over again. That would beg the question, what feeds fungus if these are fungal related? And the answer is beer, whole grains, corn, peanuts, and antibiotics. Now if your diet is those foods and the doctor keeps handing you antibiotics, you can see where I'm going with all of this. We can take excellent care of our health if we're allowed to. When we get back, let's talk a little bit about sugar addiction. Feeling tired, fatigued, and desperate for more energy? You're toxic. Energy comes back when you clear toxins from your body and deliver oxygen to your cells to convert nutrients to energy. Take NSC Immunition Glucan, NSC CoQ10, and NSC Milk Thistle to nutritionally help your body remove cellular debris created by deficient exercise, excess stress, and toxin ingestion from our food, air, and water. Coenzyme Q10 helps your body deliver needed oxygen to redirect your cells to power up. Add NSC Milk Thistle and NSC Glucan to nutritionally clean your body filters to remove toxins, freeing the body to deliver sought after energy. Are you tired of being tired? Help your body help you with NSC Immunition Glucan, NSC CoQ10, and NSC Milk Thistle, and then feel the surge. Which of my books fit you? Are you or a loved one suffering with allergies, arthritis, intestinal problems, or depression? In the Fungus Link One book, the diet is there, the antifungals are there, and so is the information on those disorders. Once again, such a great, great question. Listen to this, I think you'll appreciate this. What causes sugar cravings, Doug? And why are people not addicted to carrots or green apples? I mean, they have fructose. Why aren't we addicted to sitting down with a bushel of green apples and eating it? The short answer is this, and then I wanna expound for another minute. Sugar feeds fungus directly. It's high octane food for fungus. I mean, it's as good as it gets, sugar loves it. Yes, the middle of the carrot is a form of sugar, right? But carrot has something called falcarinol that just annihilates fungus. And green apples are a rich source of malic acid, which just annihilates fungus. So this is the way God made food, right? The food that we eat might encourage the fructose, a little fungal growth, but the pectin in the apple, the malic acid, the falcarinol, the beta carotene in the carrot, just don't allow us to become addicted to those. Here is, or disallows it from becoming or feeding a fuel, uh, fueling a fungal problem. Janice Moore 
30 years ago now, wrote this article, Dr. Janice Moore, Parasites That Change the Behavior of Their Host. Some parasites, now she, I don't believe, knows about fungus being a parasite. Some parasites, it was later found, change the behavior of their host by invading its central nervous system. Sound like science fiction? Or it sounds like what you learn on Know the Cause. The central nervous system can become impregnated by fungus. And then white sugar, which isn't a food in and to itself, right? It's a processed thing. It just directly feeds it. So when you have a fungal infection, do you ever wonder why you're just craving sugar? Not green apples, not carrots, not asparagus. You are craving sugar. Folks, when a human fungal cell relationship exists, remember they're much alike, yeast cells and human cells, always fungus becomes the dominant cell and it must eat. And it doesn't like a lot of green apples. Loves sugar. More to come on Know the Cause. You need to be an educated consumer to find the best probiotic. Dr. O'Hara's stands out in its quality and consistent effects. I'm pharmacist Dr. Ross Pelton, and I only recommend Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. It provides live beneficial bacteria and nourishes your own native probiotics. This supports long-term digestive comfort and a healthy immune system. I believe in Dr. O'Hara's lasting results. It takes guts to stay healthy. Hi, I'm Carlos Escalante. I traveled to the Patagonia regions of Chile to find the maki berry, a wild harvested fruit. Now for the first time ever, we have a patented extract, 700 times stronger in antioxidant value than the leading superfruits. Research show that it's preserving eye health and supporting healthy blood glucose levels, along with your immune systems. Call today to find out how you can get a free bottle of maki delphinol from Herbal Ultra. Another, it's interesting when I allow you to steer the show how well you do. So here's another great question, Anita says, is this a fungal problem, Doug? I have a persistent cough. What is the cause? Um, I gotta tell you a couple of funny stories. Number one, let me tell you, when I first met Frank Jordan, I was working at Medical City Dallas with Dr. David Weekly and Dennis Bodwin and all these great doctors there. And a little boy, nine years old, came in, made an appointment with me, sat down, we talked about nutrition, and this poor kid, was coughing and coughing and coughing. Sitting in the waiting room, the nurse said, hey, can we bring him into your office because you know, he's coughing so much. Frank Jordan had dropped off a bottle of NSC 100 with us there. I mean, this is 20 years, 15, 20 years ago. And so I said to the little boy, take two of these and a glass of water. His mom and dad were with him. And I gotta tell you, miracle upon miracle, this is the way God works. Um, 10 minutes later, his dad said, he's not coughing. And I said, okay, let's keep an eye. Maybe the NSC helped. One hour later, the father starts crying, and he said he hasn't gone an hour even at night without coughing. So we began him on something called beta-glucan. So in, in minor cough infections that seem major, sometimes just amping up the immune system helps. I mean, Dr. Weekly was just enamored. But another story, in answer to your question, Anita, I love half-price books. We have them here in Texas, and they literally are. I mean, you can buy an old medical textbook for a dollar or two. So I found this old medical textbook. I hopped up on a chair at half-price book. I pulled it off the shelf, and I mean this was on mycology. This thing dated probably 1911. I still have it, but I can't open it. I opened it, began fanning through it, and dust came up, and I got sick. And I'm telling you, I got really sick. John remembers this. Uh, the producer was here probably seven or eight years ago. And I went home and loaded up on garlic and did everything I knew how to do, and it didn't work. And it wasn't until a few weeks later, my voice went away, um, that I got some Diflucan, and I got it to go away. I changed my diet immediately. I went to juicing greens and so forth, and that helped. But I was making, I was producing this mucus that was just horrible. That is the case of a dramatic fungal infection. Now, once again, a doctor is going to put you on an antibiotic, almost robotically, because he sees an infection might be there, you're going on an antibiotic. 
What in my case if I'd have gone on an antibiotic? Didn't you just learn on Know the Cause that antibiotics fuel fungal infections? Antibiotics may have helped me for a few weeks and then it'd come back with a vengeance. Fungal infections or overgrowth such as coccidio, histoplasmosis, tuberculosis are known as causative agents contributing to persistent cough. Isn't that interesting that it just works like that? Here today I'm better. I still love old medical books. I'm just much more careful. Now, that was my immune system that failed me. What about this immune system and who knows more than Frank Jordan? Okay, as Frank Jordan says, here's your immune system. Here's your immune system on beta glucan. All right, there you go. Looks like somebody paddling out, maybe somebody in our studio. Frank, thank you for joining us today. For those of you who don't know, maybe you're a brand new viewer, Philadelphia, San Francisco, welcome aboard. Beta-glucan is a supplement that doesn't kill anything. It's not like vitamin C that can sop up debris, bacteria, fungus in your bloodstream. Rather, beta-glucan defends your own cells that the good Lord gave you, right? And they're called immune cells, and there's a lot of them. Well, beta-glucan is a biological defense modifier, meaning it modifies positively that which protects you. In our body, 20% of our cells are immune cells. We have 20 trillion, almost more than the government can spend in a day. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so they are there. We have to feed them. We have to keep them activated. And we have to make sure that they're in sufficient numbers with enough potency to go fight the battle hey, to hey, save Frank, us. What, what drives them down? In other words, like I start, what, what makes our immune system like this? We have several things. We have disease as we, we, as we age. Yep. We have accidents that create trauma. Uh, we have stress that affects us in no good ways. Mm -hmm. uh, we have so many different things. In the natural aging process, uh, we have a deterioration after we're in, through our childbearing years. The body begins to, uh, to go downhill. So we've got to keep it stirred up. We've got to keep it normalized is the word we like to use right. and keep those immune cells in sufficient numbers available to fight the fires when they confront us. You and I talked about cancer and you had a really neat demonstration today about cancer cells, which by the way, folks, grow in sacs, 12 layers, 15 layers. I, of course, believe that's a fungal sac called an ascomycete. However, the experts in the field say, no, no, that's a tumor. That's just the way tumors grow. This I thought was brilliant. Yeah, first of all, I totally agree with you. So mm, thank you. <laughs> whatever those experts are, <laughs> I hope they wake up. We use oral proteolytic enzymes along with the beta-glucan, and what these do is strip that coating of uh, 15 layers, or eight, up to 18, on a cancer cell. And what happens is when you begin to strip that layer, you still need more layers off. So the oral proteolytic enzymes have an enteric coating. They go through the digestive process. They locate cancer cells in the bloodstream, in the tissues, and they expose them. They cut go. through all of this, and when you have the cancer cells exposed, then the immune cells can, with glasses from the glucan, just think of yep. it that way, that's the simple way, it puts glasses on those immune cells. They can see the exposed cancer cells and respond, and that's the, the macrophages, neutrophils, all mm -hmm. the T cells, and they come in and attempt to kill the cancer cells. Frank isn't saying this cures cancer. Okay, what he's doing is what I believe every oncologist, every urologist in the world should be saying. If only your immune system worked better. But Richard, I'm sorry, your immune system didn't. You ended up with cancer. Folks, doctors didn't learn in medical school unless they went to the University of Nevada where uh, one of the, the professors knows about this. Uh, they didn't learn about beta-glucan. Uh, this is a very, very powerful supplement that assists your body's own immune system. So once you isolate the cancer cells, uh, they can gobble it up, phagocytose it, uh, phagocytize it, which they do with any pathogen. That's the way the immune system is supposed to work. Well, that's true. If you'd like to hear more of these, you can go to nsc24.com. I have commentaries on all of these issues and another 120 health issues, and they're only like two and a half minutes. They're very brief. Yeah, Frank, they're very good. Everything you've done is very good. Frank has developed specific products, an eye formula, a pain formula, a skin formula, etc. But today we're talking about gobbling up the debris in your body. Why aren't these digestive enzymes, you call them proteolytic enzymes? Some of them are actually the same as digestive, but digestive don't have the enteric coating, so they're used in the digestive process, which is very important. We have superzymes, which are digestive enzymes, and if you've got bloating, flatulence, your constipation, all the issues of the gut, then that's the ones you should have. They are truly amazing. You take about two hours before you eat, 
and they help break down. All of the people that say they've got, oh, this acid issue, you really got too few enzymes, and the acid's trying to come in and break down your food so you can digest it. If you have the enzymes, you probably will not have the acid issue. That makes so much sense to me, Frank, because we are eating dead food. We are so used to eating fast foods without any enzymes in them. So get back to a raw diet. I asked you one time if you had cancer, I'd eat 80%, you know, That's raw right. diet, et cetera. Exercise, sweat, get rid of the toxins, and I'd take beta-glucan. You can take it too. You can get it free. This is going to be sent to you by calling the telephone number at the bottom of the screen. You don't pay postage. You don't pay a thing. Frank will send it to you because he knows after about a week, you'll want the big boy. Frank, thank you for coming in. Good demos thank you, today. Good demos. Great. Great toys. Don't go away, friends. I'll be right back with more. Barb and Frank Long of Long Life Unlimited are distributors of one of the best home cleaning degreaser products in the country called Orange TKO with Delimony. Also, they feature many products in the Rafa Remedy line. Try this amazing product on your skin today. They also can serve you with 300 other products, many that are featured on Know the Cause. Ask for the Know the Cause special now by calling the number or logging on to longlifeunlimited.com. Remember, it's God-given, people approved, and doctor recommended. Did you know cancer affects nearly one in two people? Learn integrative and alternative options for this and other disease at the Integrated Health International Conference, March 20th to 22nd at Town & Country Resort, San Diego, with over 100 doctors, experts, and vendors. Sunday, military and veterans free in a special PTSD event, an opportunity to clear up painful memories. For tickets, visit SanDiegoHealth.net or call 888-848-0142. SanDiegoHealth.net or 888-848-0142. Well, in the old days, the phase one diets at amaranth and quinoa and buckwheat, those are grains, you know, so we have to avoid them. Thank God for you and Denny, you know, coming to my rescue and saying, wait a minute, Doug, these are seeds. So uh, welcome aboard thank and thank you, you for joining us uh, today. Quinoa, amaranth, and uh, buckwheat. Now, let's start with a question you probably have because I do. When I go into a store and I see buckwheat pancake mix, is that buckwheat? Usually not. Usually it's mostly wheat flour and with a little buckwheat added in. Just They do it for texture reasons, but you always always right. have to read the labels no matter what. Are you serious? Labels. So if I put orange on this, <laughs> it'll be an orange, right? Um, so, okay, so buckwheat, though, is a seed. Teach us a little bit about these three. So these are all seeds, and they're all complete proteins. So the same as chicken, fish, beef. So you're getting your, your, all your essential amino acids. Mm -hmm. The quinoa is a great substitute for rice. I love quinoa. Um, I'll use it. Uh, a lot of people don't like the nutty taste at first. And See, I always I tell that. people, I do too, but sometimes it takes, you know, when you're, you're eating the sad diet, it takes time to get used to the natural. Sad stuff. being standard American <laughs> right. diet. Okay. Yeah. So I use vegetable broth to help to um, kind of mask the flavor just a little. And in a lot of recipes, you'll, they say to toast the quinoa. If you don't, I wouldn't recommend that because then you're going to increase the flavor. So for kids and maybe husbands that aren't a fan of, of quinoa at first, Try it 10 to 15 times, and you'll start to really enjoy the flavor. Um, but it is mild. It's so good neutral. for you. It's so good for you. It's a complete protein. It really helps with blood sugar um, and because it has all the fiber in it. There is a restaurant in near downtown Dallas that has quinoa salads. Yes. Have you ever? Oh, Yum. buddy. Yes. It is so, so yes. good. I go out of my way to get one of these salads. and. Just delicious. Yes. Okay. Love quinoa. So and I and I add things with quinoa. I don't eat it plain. You know, okay. I add lots of vegetables or meats or you can do so many different things. You wouldn't go to a, a movie with a bucket of quinoa. <laughs> no. Example. Okay, good. <laughs> and then amaranth. Amaranth is a great um, breakfast cereal. It's almost kinda like grits. It has twice the calcium that milk has. So it's a really great absorbable type of calcium because a lot of dairy products are not absorbable type of calcium. How would you eat it? Would you uh, would you have a bowl of amaranth? I do. I, I eat it kind of like cream of wheat. Do you remember okay. that? Yes. So sure. I put my, my butter and I use stevia yep. for my yep. sweetener yep. and cinnamon in there and it is my favorite like wintertime porridge. I was going to say on a 
cold morning, yes. having a bowl. It just doesn't sound right. A bowl of am kids ready? Come on downstairs. <laughs> you brush your teeth. Time for a bowl of amaranth. <laughs> you know, but know. cream of wheat or malt oatmeal. Yes. You know, that would always get us yes. down. Okay, very similar semantics. Okay. Yes. Um, and then buckwheat, now there's the whole seed buckwheat and the cream of buckwheat. The cream of buckwheat is great because it cooks in about 10 minutes and it's a lot like grits. Kyle always uses it for grits. Um, I like using it sweet and I put strawberries or different berries in it. I cook it in coconut milk so it gives it that really great flavor, um, the good fats. And so I I'm a fan of the pseudo grains. It really opens up the phase one diet and makes yeah. you feel like you're eating grains. And they're often referred to as grains. Mm -hmm. um, the pseudo grains, they're seeds, not grains, but they're referred to as grains because they're used the exact same way grains are um, used in cooking. So if you see the quinoa grain, don't be scared. They are seeds and phase one friendly. Exactly. So they're, <laughs> thank you. They are phase one friendly. Emma Jane, will she begin oh, to eat yes. this? Yes. I can't soon? wait till we can puree up some right. quinoa. And She's things. six months. She's six months. So, so we're not quite there what yet. What do you think? Eight months? Nine months? I don't know. Yeah. I'm still, I'm right in the thick of it trying to figure out. So one one step at a time Congratulations for me. Congratulations <laughs> to you and Brad. You. you bet. Okay, don't go away. More of Know the Cause right around the corner. If you have knee pain, back pain, muscle pain, or any kind of pain, Flexin is here to help. But you don't have to take my word for it. Here's what this Flexin user has to say. Well, I recommend Flexin because it has worked so well for my wife and I and we are able to continue our work uh, pain-free as a result of taking this product faithfully. You've seen Flexin on Know the Cause with Doug Kaufman. Now's your chance to take advantage of this great offer. It's buy one, get one free, but you have to call right now. Call 1-800-N-PAIN. Which of my books fit you? How many people do we know suffering with kidney diseases, skin problems, postpartum depression? All those topics are covered along with the phase one, phase two diet and natural and prescriptive antifungals in the book, The Fungus Link, volume three. Uh, knowledge is power. You really need to educate yourselves. Um, doctors are wonderful. They're out there to, you know, I think they have some good intentions. I think they don't know everything. And I think that we need to educate ourselves and learn how our bodies work, what works best for us. Wonderful questions today. All of those people went to our website, scrolled right down here on our homepage to eye to eye segment and they typed in their information, 40 characters, one of them was diverticulitis, and then they got their answer. So thank you folks for joining us today. Thank you, Kristen, for those great segments. Let's float it away today on a superfood many of you have tried. Try it again, it's called chia seed. Chia seeds were once referred to as Indian running food due to their incredible energizing powers. Chia has a high amount of tryptophan, so it can improve serotonin levels. Think happy, happy. Chia seeds also help with insulin sensitivity and diabetes by balancing your blood sugar.